Many of the writers for Futurama are quite intelligent and let's say over-educated. The writing staff held three PhDs, seven master's degrees and collectively had more than 50 years at Harvard. Because of this, many of the secrets, jokes and easter eggs hidden within the show are incredibly elaborate and complicated. As an example, these symbols can be found at random points throughout the show. Keen Eyed fans noticed a pattern and soon figured out that the symbols weren't just random nonsense, but rather an actual language. Well, technically more of a ciphered form of English, but uh, still. When the creators learned that fans had deciphered the first language, they of course created another, more complicated language. But it didn't take long for dedicated fans to crack the code on that one as well. Now some fans believe there's a third language hidden within the show, which has yet to be discovered. The name Futurama comes from an exhibition at the New York World's Fair in 1939. Modern and efficient city planning, breathtaking architecture, each city block a complete unit in itself. The exhibit was presented as a possible model of what the world could potentially look like 20 years in the future. A sort of envisioning of the world of tomorrow. Before the name Futurama was chosen, names like Aloha Mars and Doomsville was considered. Owls. In Futurama, they are seemingly everywhere and can often be seen lurking in the backgrounds. But uh, why, though? Is it just a weird thing they added for fun? Actually, they have a pretty good justification for their existence. At some point before the events of the show, the city had a problem with animals like rats and pigeons. To solve this problem, they released thousands of owls into the streets. But instead of solving a problem, they only replaced it with another. Even the opening sequence has some pretty obscure easter eggs that can only be seen if you pause at the right moment. For example, there are three signs with those strange alien symbols we talked about before. They read Rent a Human, 3D Rules and Tasty Human Burgers. There's also this guy reading a newspaper. The paper says Moon Pie Fight in Mars Bar, which is of course a reference to the snacks Moon Pie and Mars Candy Bars. Bender's apartment number is 00100100 and as I've mentioned, the writers are clever, so this is most likely not random. If we take this number and convert it into ASCII, we get the dollar sign. This is obviously a reference to Bender's greed and obsession with money. In a similar fashion, Leela's apartment is named 1i. The episode Jurassic Bark is for many one of the most sad, depressing and overall emotional episodes. It ends with a flashback showing that after Fry was frozen in the cryogenic chamber, his dog Seymour waited for him to return for 12 years before dying of old age. The original idea, however, was to have the episode focus on Fry's mother. It would have been his mother waiting for who knows how many years until she finally just passed away. But they soon realized that might push the depression factor a bit too far and decided to replace her with Fry's dog instead. Speaking of, the dog in this whole plot point is actually based upon the true story of a dog named Hachiko. Much like Seymour in Futurama, Hachiko waited for his deceased owner at a train station for almost 10 years until he eventually passed away. The episode The Prisoner of Benda revolves around a machine called the Mind Switcher. Essentially a device where two people can switch minds with one another and thus take control of the other person's body. Now here's the thing. One of the writers, Ken Keeler, happens to have a PhD in applied mathematics. So he decided to create a real-life mathematical theorem for this fictional mind-switching technology. The theorem basically proves that regardless of how many mind switches between two bodies have been made, they can still all be restored using only two extra people, provided these two people have not had any mind switches beforehand. In short, uh, it's complicated. The point is that it's the first time a theorem has been created for the sole purpose of entertainment in a TV show. It's simply called the Futurama Theorem. 
In the episode The Why of Fry, it revealed that Nibbler was responsible for Fry falling into the cryogenic chamber. This plot point along with Nibbler himself was actually planned from the very beginning, because in the first episode, this shadow can be seen briefly as Fry falls into the chamber. The shadow is of course that of Nibbler which means it took 64 episodes before the meaning of this shadow was revealed. I want to say foreshadowing. The character Cubert was first introduced in the episode A Clone of My Own. As the title suggests, he is the clone of Professor Farnsworth. But the character is far more interesting than what meets the eye. While Futurama is in many ways a very consistent show, it's also in many ways not. They constantly break the laws of physics and really every law in the universe. And because it's an animated show, trouble with consistency are more or less impossible to avoid. Seriously, it's, it's a fucking knot. But if you're like me and probably like 90% of Futurama's audience, who the fuck cares, right? Well, the, the other 10% of course do care. And this is where Cubert comes in. The character was always planned to be included from the very beginning, but they never fleshed out his personality until his introduction in the middle of season 2. They decided to give him this aggravating personality who criticizes everything and everyone as a sort of payback and reflection of this annoying and specific group of fans. When the writers created Hypnotoad, I doubt they thought it would become such a fan favorite and even spreading across the internet to eventually become a meme. In the Futurama world, he is responsible for the most popular television series of that time, simply titled Everybody Loves Hypnotoad. Of course, this is only because he hypnotizes everyone who starts watching. And while the show serves as a show within a show, there's actually an entire real-life episode almost exclusively featuring Hypnotoad for 20 22 minutes. It's called Everybody Loves Hypnotoad Amazon Adventure and was included as a special on the DVD release of Bender's Big Score. I mean, s seriously though, it's such a stupid. All glory 